Good morning, everybody. I'm Rich Freer. I teach at Emory University in Atlanta, and I am delighted to be with you to talk about generic federal civil procedure for the bar exam. In fact, we're going to be together for two days talking about civil procedure. Now, think about that. Two days of civil procedure, what's that mean? That means that you and I have a rendezvous with boredom. That's the deal. Two days on civil procedure. And folks, we're going to work from my handout. Please get that document. It is more than a set of hypos. This is really intended to be a separate outline. So I think you should read the Barbary materials, read the Convisor mini review, but review from the handout. Our goal is to create one document from which you're going to do your review, and that is going to be this document right here. The biggest advantage to this handout is organization. You remember one of the tough things about civil procedure from law school is how many topics there are. There's all this stuff floating around. Well, let's start off with some very, very good news today. Take a look at the top of page one of our handout, and we'll notice that every single topic in civil procedure falls into one of six big areas. In other words, there are only six areas that civil procedure questions can even come from. So for example, take a look at that first column. Are we in the right court? And you'll notice under that first column, there are three topics. And even though personal jurisdiction and subject matter and venue are different topics, it's helpful to put them together and think about them as related to one big topic, and that is, are we in the right court at all? Now, we are dealing with generic federal civil procedure, not with local state civil procedure. If your state tests local state civil procedure, you will have a separate lecture on that. But as you know, generic federal civil procedure is a multi-state subject. And of your 200 multiple choice multi-state questions on this bar exam, 27 of those will be civil procedure questions. Not only that, but in nearly every state, federal generic civil procedure is also an essay topic. And as we go through the material, I will flag for you some topics that are more likely to be covered in essay than on the MBE. But we're going to be ready no matter what form they take the questions in. We're going to work in three sessions today. Each one goes about an hour. We'll throw in a couple of breaks. So that means we're going to go about a total of three and a half hours today. And that'll get us up to page 37 of this handout. Go ahead and look. Please go ahead and look. Whenever you mention page numbers in this business, people have to look. I know, I know. And I know why. It's a trust thing. Because I know exactly what you're saying. Hey, we don't know this guy. Maybe there is no 37. <laughs> well, it's there, and we're going to get up to and part of, part of the way on to page 37 today. Then we'll break for the day. We'll come back tomorrow and wrap it up then with another three and a half hour session. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Folks, the first very, very, very big topic in civil procedure, are we in the right court? Heavily tested. And the first issue about that is personal jurisdiction. Now notice, we're going to abbreviate that PJ. You and I are going to see personal jurisdiction all day. We're going to see it in our dreams. And we don't want to keep writing that out. When you're taking bar review, it's good to have a briefs. So we're into a briefs here. Breves, I've been hanging out with my daughter a lot lately, so we use a Breves in this situation, BT dubs, okay? So we'll just call it PJ. Now let's fill in our first blank of the day. Always an exciting event. Here it is. Basic idea, this, the whole topic of PJ, is about the court's power over the parties. Let's write in there, the parties. The court must have power over the parties. Now, that's going to be easy with regard to one party. Take a look at what it says. Because the plaintiff filed the case, the court automatically has power over the plaintiff. That's no problem. The big question is personal jurisdiction over the defendant. That's the question. And here, let's cut to the chase. Notice the next line. Personal jurisdiction involves one question. This is the only thing we're asking. Can the plaintiff sue the defendant in this state, that is all we care about with personal jurisdiction. Now, here's how we analyze it. As it says, whether there is PJ is a two-step process, two-step analysis. First, you have to satisfy a state statute. That'll usually be a state long-arm statute, but there has to be a state statute. And then secondly, we have to satisfy the Constitution, which of course is due process. 
So you got to have both of those. First, there's got to be a state statute that says it's okay. And then secondly, it's got to be constitutional. Now, question. Does this analysis, first the statute, then the Constitution, does it differ depending on whether the case will be filed in federal court or state court in the forum state? No. It's the same in both. It is the same in both, and that's very good news. So it's absolutely the same analysis in state court and in federal court. Let me show you what that means. Take a look at the text. So whether a federal court in Massachusetts has PJ over the defendant is assessed exactly the same way as whether a state court in Massachusetts would have PJ. There is no difference at all. It is word for word the same. So it doesn't matter whether you're going to federal court or state court. It does not matter at all for PJ purposes.